heard about these people. You know, how many times actually you heard about people who died in the bathroom doing dope, right? Injecting themselves. They, they would be dead and their faces would be in a toilet seat. But I agree with that. How many times did you hear about this or read it in the news? Personally, I read it a lot in Egypt. But young people, personally, young people, they die in the bathroom. Why they were doing heroin or something like that, or shooting themselves. You know? And then Mecca alayhi shayim bu'ifa alayhi. The same state that you died on, this is, it will be the, the state that you died on will be the same state that will be resurrected on in the last day. So if you died in the state of Ihram, for example, you'll be, you'll be resurrected in the last day saying, Nabayk Allahumma Nabayk. If you die in the state of prostration to Allah, you will come in the last day doing the same thing, saying, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi al if you die and watching like something alone on the internet, you will be also risen back to doing the same thing. Well, yeah. It's a shame. Unmasking. This is the last day. It'll be the unmasking day. If you die with Adam Bilal, doing or committing adultery, you will be in the light, you will come in the last day committing adultery. You know? So she the good end. It's very dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Allah maj'al abdal a'mali khawatimi. Oh Allah, make the best of my deeds, the best of my deeds to be my last deeds. Or make my last deeds to be the best deeds I've ever done. The story, brothers and sisters, again about a man, a, 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 a scholar, a learned person. His name was Bal'am bin Ba'ura. The story is the shortest story in Surah Al-A'raf, verse 175 and 176. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَدُّ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِنْ تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَبْهَبْ أَوْ تَتْرُكُ يَلْبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this man told him the story of the man to whom we send our signs but he lapsed them past so that the, shay the shaytan kept after him and he went straight he went straight and if it had been our will, we should have raised him with our signs. But he was timbered down to the earth and followed his own useless desires. So he's similar to the dog. If you attack him, he puts out his tongue. And if you leave him alone, he hangs out his tongue. But Amban bin Ba'ura, he used to live in a place in Jordan. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam passing, passing his tribe along with Ben Israel going to Jerusalem. At this, at this area where they used to, the Kanaaniyun and the, the Amalil used to live in this area. So they were afraid of Musa alayhi salam and his army. So they went to the most devoted person to them, who was Bal'am bin Ba'ura. And they told him, we need you to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy Musa and his followers. And they said his dua used to be responded. That's how close he was to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how devoted he was. That his dua used to be responded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything he makes dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to reality. So you see what they were afraid of Moses and his companions and they said to him, we need you to make dua that Allah will destroy Moses and his people. So what are you talking about? What are you going to make dua against a prophet? And he is a true prophet. But I'm not going to make dua against him or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy him. They said in my narration, every time he 
uh, they start like like tempting him with money. And they give you money. I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna give you that. So he fell in the traps of the shit. After being worshipper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Buddhist worshipper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he became a follower of the shaitan. And they said he started actually to make dua against Sayyidina Musa and his people. He started asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy Musa and his followers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't listen to him. Alright? And every time he used to make dua, the dua will afflict the others. His group. They found out that dua is not working. So they went to him and they said, we'll find a, another trick. The dua is not, apparently is not working. Let's find another trick. He said to himself, I lost my akhirah. I'm not going to lose my life, my duty. Here is the trick. You go back to your tribe and tell every woman to dress the best that she had and take some goods, try to sell them to, remove, to the followers of Musa, okay, and try to seduce them. And if any one of Musa's companions wanted her, or wanted any one of them, told them do not prevent your, themselves from, from Moses companions. So now we just try like, to spread in evil now, spread in corruption in the earth. He's calling them to let their wives have an adultery with the companions of Moses. Actually some of the companions of Moses, they they committed this sin and they committed adultery with this woman. And they said later on that this man, when Musa knew about him, Musa started making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this person lost everything. He lost his dunya, and he lost also his death. That's the story, brothers. As I said, it's a very short story, but it has a lot of meaning. This man, he was a devoted worshiper to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what happened to him? He died in a state of shit, but I was the second point is how could we achieve or how could we get a good end? What should we do in order to have a good end? Two things. First is ikhlas, sincerity. A sincerity. And the second is thinking good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First, sincerity. And they said sincerity is to filter all your actions from democracy. You come into the masjid, you come in for a much kind. You're not coming you're not coming here to show up. Don't be like the person who was praying in the masjid by himself. Alright? Who was praying in the masjid by himself. Nobody was around. And then he heard the the, the door open. And then he said, I should just perfect my prayer now because some, some people just walked in. He didn't see them. He didn't see who walked in the message. But he said, well, I get to perfect my prayer. Right? So now he's showing off. Now it's not his prayer. It's not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he started praying and praying. He took too long and he perfected his prayer. And after he finished, you know who walked in? A dog. There was a dog who walked in the door. Right? Sincerity is to filter all your actions from the from the hypocrisy. And Junaid said, sincerity, it's a secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No shaitan or no shaitan can know about it find out about it in order to ruin it, neither uh, an angel in order to record it. So it's a secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time of uh, Al-Amawiyyin, there was a, the, uh, the, the leader army, the commander of the army, his name was Musaf Maslama ibn Abdul Malik. Maslama ibn Abdul Malik, he was the commander of the Muslim army at this time. They surrounded a, a Roman 
town. The town was very boring. They had like a, a, a very tall, long fortress and walls. They couldn't get through. There was a man from the from the Muslims army. He came to Maslama uh, ibn Abdul Malik, and he said, "I've got an idea. I can make a hole through the wall, but it'll be enough 